जयोंग विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज कचार्य अष्टोत्तर शतु श्री श्रीमाद अभय चरणार बिंदु भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद की जाए जयोंग विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज कचार्य अष्टोत्तर शतु श्री श्रीमाद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर की जाए अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाए नामाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवा शि गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की जाए श्री वृंदावन धाम की जाए श्री मथुरा धाम की जाए श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जाए श्री मायापुर नवदेव धाम की जाए गंगा मई की जाए जमुना मई की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए तुलसी महारानी की जाए हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए समवेतो भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री श्री गोवर्धन पूजा की जाए गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांग ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नितिनामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चतादिशुतारिणे श्रील प्रौपाद की जाए <coughs> ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्ण सो टुडे इज गोवर्धन पूजा देर फॉर वी आर गोइंग टू रीड फ्रॉम the 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam the 24th chapter of 10th canto describes the worshiping of govardhan here so i can see many of you have come from outside also so welcome to all of you to श्री श्री अवंतीपुर धाम टू राधा मदन मोहन टेम्पल थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड हैप्पी गोवर्धन पूजा टू ऑल ऑफ यू टूडे इज गो पूजा ऑल्सो सो द प्रोग्राम हैज बीन अनाउंस सो एट ट्वेल्व ओ क्लॉक देल बी गो पूजा इन फ्रंट ऑफ द टेम्पल एंड देन एट ट्वेल्व फिफ्टीन विल बी गोवर्धन पूजा ड्यूरिंग द आरतिक गोवर्धन पूजा वी जस्ट गोवर अन्नकूट द माउंटेन ऑफ फूड विल बी ऑफर टू गिरिधारी गिरिधारी गोपाल कृष्ण सो वर्शिपिंग Govardhan Hill, Chapter Twenty Four of Tenth Canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. In this chapter, I'll just read the summary of this chapter, and then we'll discuss about Govardhan Puja. In this chapter, Lord Krishna crushes the pride of Indra by prohibiting a sacrifice intended for him. and initiating a substitute sacrifice in worshiping of govardhan hill when shri krishna saw the cowherd men busily preparing for a sacrifice to indra he inquired about it from their king nanda nanda explained that the rain given by indra enables all living entities to maintain their lives 
and therefore this sacrifice would be executed to satisfy him. Krishna responded, quote, It is because of karma alone that living entities take their birth in a certain body, experience varieties of happiness and suffering in that body, and then give it up as the karma pertaining to it runs out. Thus, it is karma alone that is our enemy, our friend, our guru, and our lord. And Indra can do nothing to alter the happiness and distress of anyone, for everyone is tightly bound by his karmic reaction. The material modes of goodness, passion and ignorance bring about the creation, maintenance and destruction of this world. The clouds give forth rain when they are impelled by the mode of passion and cowherds prosper by protecting the cows. Furthermore, the cowherds proper residence is in the forest and on the hills. Therefore, you should offer worship to the cows, the brahmanas, and Govardhan Hill." Unquote. After Krishna spoke thus, he arranged for the cowherd men to worship Govardhan with a paraphernalia collected for the sacrifice to Indra. He then assumed a huge, unprecedented transcendental form and devoured all the food and other offerings presented to Govardhan. As he did so, he proclaimed to the cowherd community that although they had worshipped Indra for so long, he had never appeared in person, whereas Govardhan himself had now manifest before their eyes and eaten their offerings of foodstuffs. Therefore, they should all now offer obeisances to Govardhan Hill. Then Lord Krishna joined the cowherds in offering obeisances to his own newly assumed form. <clears throat> okay. Then we go further on to the chapter 25. Lord Krishna lifts Govardhan Hill. This chapter describes how Lord Indra was overcome by anger when the residents of Raja cancelled his sacrifice. How he tried to punish them by sending forth a devastating rainfall to Vrindavan. And how Lord Sri Krishna protected Gokul by lifting Govardhan Hill and for seven days using it as the umbrella to ward off the rain. Indra agreed at the disruption of the sacrifice meant for him. I'm sorry, Indra angered at the disruption of the sacrifice meant for him and fals falsely presuming himself the supreme controller, said, people often give up the pursuit of transcendental knowledge. The means for self-realization and imagine that they can cross over the ocean of material existence by mundane fruitive sacrifices. Similarly, these cowherd men have become intoxicated by pride and have offended me by taking shelter of an ignorant, ordinary child, Krishna. To remove this supposed pride of the residents of Raja, Indra sent clouds known as Sambartaka, whose function is to facilitate the destruction of the world. He sent them to harass the Brajavasis with downpours of rain and hail. The cowherd community was very disturbed by this and approached Krishna for shelter. Understanding this trouble was the work of Indra, Krishna decided to smash to pieces, smash to pieces, Indra's false prestige 
and thus he lifted Govardhan Hill with one hand. He then invited the entire cowherd community to take shelter in the dry space beneath the mountain. For seven successive days he held up the hill until Indra finally understood Krishna's mystic power and ordered the clouds to withdraw. When the cowherd villagers emerged from beneath the mountain, Krishna put Govardhan Hill back in its proper place. The cowherds were in ecstasy, showing loving symptoms such as flo flowing tears and bodily hair standing on end. They embraced Krishna and offered him benedictions according to their respective positions while the demigods in heaven rained down flowers and sang the Lord's praises. <clears throat> then you go to the chapter 26. In this chapter, okay, so uh, Yeah, so I think we just read only up to this much. So Govardhan Puja, the worship uh, of Govardhan Hill. The word Puja means, Puja means worship. And Govardhan, it's a hill in Vrindavan. So Govardhan is actually an expansion of Krishna. And Govardhan is very special because Vrindavan is Gokul, the community of the cowherd people. And go Vardhan. Vardhan means increase. Hmm. Where the cowherd community or the cows increase, cow culture increase. That is go Vardhan. So go Vardhan hmm, hill is worshipped. A hill is worshipped. And in this way, Krishna actually showing that there is no need to worship the demigods. Actually, in the Hindu culture, there is a very big com confusion. The confusion between, uh, confusion due to the misunderstanding or lack of understanding between Devtas and Bhagavan. The devtas, hmm, Prabhupada translated the word devtas as demigods. Uh, and Krishna is Bhagavan. Bhagavan is the supreme personality of Godhead. Do you understand the difference? Uh, one is a demigod. Demigod means demi. They are not even God as yet. They are not really God. Uh, the demigods, they are individuals with some special power. Hmm. Devtas, uh, who are these devtas? They are actually the devtas are the controllers of different affairs of this universe. Uh, like this is one universe, in this universe there are different departments. Hmm. There is, say, wind department. Just as in the city of Ujjain there are different departments. Uh, if we go to the uh, mm, city center we will find there are different offices and there are different offices of different departments. Electric supply department, water supply department mm, and so forth. Similarly in the universal affairs, 
there are different departments. There is uh, wind in the universe. Who is controlling the wind? Who is in charge of the wind department? Pavan? Pavan Bhagavan or Pavan Dev? Huh? Pavan Dev. Uh, there is uh, fire department. Who is in charge? Agni Dev. Uh, there is water department. Who is in charge? Varun Dev. Hmm. And uh, there is the king of all the Devas. Who is that? Huh? King of who says Mahadev? I hear somebody say. No, the king of all the Devas is Indra Dev. Indra. So, <clears throat> Indra Dev. So these are all Devs. And they are ca taking care of these different departments only uh, of this universe. But how many, how many universes are there? Why are you late, Amal, Amal Bhakta? Why are you late? Every day you are coming late, not today. I started the culture that uh, 8 o'clock the door will be closed. Still you are coming late. <coughs> so, <coughs> so different. Uh, close the door. Yeah, there, I don't want anybody to come. So, uh, who is there? Come in, Shelly. You can come in and close the door. Lock it up. No, you stay outside. Stay out. Lock, lock it up. The class is not the place when anybody can come in at their whims. <clears throat> Indra Dev. Indra is the king of the all the demigods, devas and devis. There are devis also. For example, there is education department. Who is in charge of the education department? Everybody knows. <laughs> Saraswati Devi. Uh, even more important is finance department. Who is in charge of the finance department? Lakshmi Devi. So these are the Devas and Devis. But Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Devis and Devas are many, but Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Devis and Devas are many, but how many Bhagavans are there? Bhagavan is one. Ekameva Aditya Parama Purusha. So is Hinduism uh, believe many gods or one Supreme Personality of Godhead? Uh, people think that Hindus believe in many gods uh, because in English there is only one expression, gods, God. But in Sanskrit there is Devis, Devas, Devta and Bhagavan. So Hindu is Hinduism monotheistic? Uh, is Hinduism uh, does Hinduism believe in one God or many gods? Uh, is it clear in your, to you all? Uh, so these are the very, very important things that we should understand. Uh, that's why Hinduism is being denigrated like that. People think Hinduism is a hodgepodge religion. But Hinduism is the original religion. Sanatan Dharma. So that understanding has to be clear. So <clears throat> as I was saying, one universe has many 
demigods. And how many universes are there? How many universes are there? Innumerable universes. Innumerable. Unendless universes. And uh, all these universes are created by somebody? Or did it come by accident? Did the universes appear as an accident? <clears throat> hmm? Or from a big bang? How many of you think that he, the creation started from a big bang? There was a big sound and the creation came. Huh? Or there was a primordial soup <laughs> and from soup <laughs> huh? there was universe. Even if there is a soup, somebody must have created the soup or cooked the soup. The soup couldn't be there by itself. So, uh, now who is the creator? Who is the creator? Vishnu is the creator. Who is Vishnu? Vishnu is an expansion of Krishna for the sake of creating this material nature. When the Lord expands in order for the creation of material nature, then he assumes the form of Vishnu. Uh, how many Vishnus are there? Uh, three Vishnus are there. Three types of Vishnus. Uh, Karanodakshai Vishnu or Mahavishnu. Mm. One who is lying in the causal ocean. Karanodakshai Vishnu. He is lying in the causal ocean and as he is breathing, from his breathing all these universes are coming out. When you breathe under water, did you ever try breathing under water? What happens? Uh, bubbles come. Mm. So similarly, when Mahavishnu is breathing in causal ocean, uh, the bubbles are created. And each bubble is an universe. And Vishnu is not breathing only through his mouth. Vishnu is breathing through every pore of his body also. We also breathe through our pores. But that breathing is unregistered practically. When you breathe under water, from our pores, bubbles are not generated. They're generated, but they're so small that we don't notice that. But when Mahavishnu breathes in causal ocean, even from the pores of his body, the bubbles are generated and they're the universes. This way there are various types of, various sizes of universes. various types of universe. And then there is uh, Mahavishnu's body, from the pores of Mahavishnu's body, uh, as he is breathing, the universe is generated. Now, is Mahavishnu's body limited or unlimited? The pores in Mahavishnu's body are limited or unlimited? So, in, in that sense, the universe is also unlimited. And then, uh, say, a uh, bubble is generated in the causal ocean. Now, have you seen the bubble? What is inside the bubble? Inside the bubble is only air. Uh, so then Mahavishnu enters into each universe, inside each universe, as Garbhodokshai Vishnu. Then he fills up the universe <coughs> <clears throat> he fills up the universe with water generated from his body. The water comes out from the body is known as sweat. So, uh, they, this is Sanskrit word for sweat is sweda. Here you can see how Sanskrit is the mother of all languages. 
English word sve, sweat came from the Sanskrit word sveda. Do you see the similarity? Uh, sveda, S V E D A, uh, and S W uh, sve. Uh, and how do you spell sweat? S W E A T. Sweat. So anyway, so sway, therefore it's called Sweda Bari. As if it's the sweat of Mahavishnu. I'm sorry, Garbodokshay Vishnu. So he fills up the universe with half the half, fills up half the universe with the sweat from his body and then he lies on that water. That is Garbha Dokshai Vishnu. Garbha Udak Shai Vishnu. Then from his navel sprouts a lotus. From his navel comes out a lotus and Brahma is born in that lotus. So that is how creation actually takes place. Anyway, so uh, this is the difference between demigods and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna actually made it a point that He is the only worshipable Lord. There is no need to worship this demigods and demigodies. Because in simple words, but does it, does it mean we should be disrespectful for, to them? No. We should respect them, but we should understand who they are. Like if you know the chairman, uh, do you go to the clerk? If you know the chairman of the company, do you need to go to the clerk to get your work done? Or you phone up the chairman and tell him, uh, hello, uh, my friend, how are you doing? <laughs> Don't you say that? Look, I need these, these things. Can you please send it to me? And your friend, who is the chairman, he says, okay. And he instructs the departmental heads to take care. So that is the advantage of worshipping Krishna. Another example is given. Krishna is the root, being the cause of the creation, and he being the supreme maintainer. He is the root of everything. So when you pour water in the root, do you need to separately put water in the branches and twigs and leaves? Hmm? Is there any need to water the different parts of the tree? Just by watering the root, the whole tree gets watered. Similarly, when Krishna is worshipped, all the demigods are satisfied. But this, <clears throat> through these pastimes, Krishna is making this point to us. Krishna at that time was very little. He was only seven years old. He was seven years old and one day, one morning, he saw that everyone is very busy preparing for something. So Krishna asked his father, uh, Nanda Maharaj, why are you so busy? What are you doing? So, Nanda Maharaj, actually Bhagavatam, we have to understand, is the summary. Mm. The activities of Krishna in short has been given in Bhagavatam. But they have been elaborately described in different Puranas and Samhitas and Champus. Like for example, uh, Srila uh, Jiva Goswami in Gopal Champu describes elaborately the Govardhan Puja. Gargamuni in Garga Samhita describes uh, these pastimes of Krishna. All these pastimes of Krishna has been elaborately explained. Uh, so we'll try to recall some of those descriptions. So Krishna was uh, Krishna saw it has been described how it as it has been described in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in summary Krishna asked Nanda Maharaj 
At first, Nanda Maharaj didn't want to answer. He was, first of all, he was too busy and he knew that once this boy starts to ask questions, there will be m millions of questions, one after another. So, and he was too busy to indulge in this uh, answering question-answer session. <laughs> so, Nanda Maharaj first tried to avoid. said, Krishna, I'm too busy. Please don't, not now, some other time. <laughs> then Krishna says, look, if I do not know, then I'll be in ignorance. And everybody will say that your son is a fool. <laughs> so Nanda Maharaj in final says, okay, tell me, what do you, uh, okay, uh, today we are preparing for Indra Puja, worshipping Indra. Krishna asked, why do you worship Indra? <laughs> Nanda Maharaj said, yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> like there will be millions of questions now that you started. <clears throat> so Nanda Maharaj said, we are cowherd people, we need rain. Annad bhavanti bhutani parjannad anna sambhava because of rain, the food grains are produced. <coughs> Krishna wanted to say something else also. He didn't say it at that time, which is said in Bhagavad Gita after that. <laughs> Jagad Bhavati Parjanna. <laughs> that also, up to that, it was also all right. Uh, so Parjanna, the Anna Sambhava. Uh, uh, Jagga Karma Samud Bhava. Anyway, <coughs> so Nanda Maharaj said, look, uh, we are coward people, we need rain, and uh, that's why we worship Indra. Indra is the god of rain, he's the controller of rain. So Krishna said, well, in the middle of the ocean, there is no need for water. And no one there <laughs> worships Indra, but still how does it rain in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> Nanda Maharaj got stuck. <laughs> and so he said, look, uh, Krishna, this is a custom that worshipping Indra is going on for generations. So then Krishna asked, is this custom Vedic or colloquial? Uh, is it a local custom or a Vedic custom. Nanda Maharaj thought and then he said that it is actually a local custom. And Krishna said, why stick to this local custom? There is no need to worship Indra. Uh, Indra uh, doesn't give rain. Like everything happens in this material nature according to karmic reaction. And we are cowherd community. We should be thankful to Govardhan. For Govardhan gives the soft green grass that our cows graze on in the pasturing grounds. Govardhan supplies the water. And in this way, Krishna started to glorify Govardhan. <coughs> then Nanda Maharaj, uh, then Krishna says, let's worship Govardhan. So Nanda Maharaj <coughs> accepted Krishna's instructions and all the paraphernalia that was meant, that was collected for Indra Puja has been used in Govardhan Puja. They offered. Gopal Champu gives a very elaborate description of this Annakut, the collection of foodstuff. Uh, you want to hear what kind of uh, Annakut was there? The mountain was made of foodstuff. First they put banana leaves all around. Then on top of those banana leaves they put chapatis and parathas and puris. That was the first layer. Uh, 
then the uh, then they stacked rice uh, fried rice <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, pushpanya uh, that uh, pulao <laughs> so so all that was stacked up and then they put um, layers of uh, fried stuffs uh, then they put uh, halwa <laughs> sabji so all that was piled up in a huge mountain and then uh, this is how the annakoot the mountain of annya was made and then as it was offered to govardhan they saw that there was a huge form that looked exactly like krishna just as govardhan's peak reached the sky this form also looked like his head was up to the sky and with his big hands he was taking the food and he was eating and <clears throat> oh i forgot to mention one thing also they made this fountain uh, they made this mountain and then they made a fountain of ghee pouring through it the hill has a uh, fountain uh, fall the fountain it was a fountain of ghee ghee was flowing through the mountain <clears throat> and so this govardhan was eating and there was a small krishna he was watching govardhan and then krishna told everyone see uh, he is eating when you offered in to indra did indra ever appear and eat you thought you are offering to indra uh, but you never saw him eating but here you can see govardhan is eating now in the meantime indra got all dressed up <laughs> ready to get the accept his worship and then he found no worship <laughs> nothing was coming to him <laughs> so indra became very surprised what happened then he found out that instead of worshiping him this cowherd people are worshiping govardhan and that also due to the instruction of a little child seven year old child so indra became very upset he said okay uh, because of their offenses they need to be punished so indra called the cloud of devastation called sambarta sambarta cloud pours rain and hail storm at the time of annihilation so indra called sambarta and he sent sambarta told sambarta go destroy vrindavan so sambarta went and all of a sudden the residents of vrindavan when they just finished sarkamambulating govardhan after offering after worshiping him they found that this cloud on the horizon north east horizon so they could see that a terrible cloud is coming with hell storm so they all were afraid and they thought yes indra has become angry now so indra will punish us so they all approach krishna please krishna krishna save us krishna said don't worry and what did krishna do the wonderful krishna although he was 7 years old he just lifted govardhan with his left hand and on the top of his little finger he held govardhan like an umbrella and krishna said please come all of you go under this hill and take shelter now because of lifting of govardhan uh, a cavity was created so they all went in that cavity 
They, when they came, Kopal Champa again describes this very nicely, that when they came, generally when the cavity is made, something whole, big hole is made, it becomes difficult to go down. But they found beautiful stairs and ramp. <laughs> for the cows, they couldn't, cows could not go through the stairs. So the cows, for the cows there was a ramp. So they took all their animals and they went under there. And they found that by lifting over the hand, a huge hall was created, which was more more opulent, more gorgeous than the most opulent palace. The, there were pillars uh, made of uh, marble and onyx. Uh, there were, the floors were uh, made of uh, precious gems and the gems were studded on the side of the walls and on the pillars which was lighting up that place. And not only that, there was so much food. <laughs> and so this way they went under Govardhan. And for seven days Indra kept on uh, sending the storm and wind with lightning and thunder. Actually, uh, thunder uh, yeah, then Indra said, sent lightning. Go and find out what happened in Vrindavan. So lightning came back in a flash, went and came back, right? And said, Vrindavan has become empty. <laughs> Everyone is dead. <laughs> Not a single soul is surviving. So Indra said, very, very good. But then wind came back and gave the news, no, 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 what lightning said was wrong. Actually Govardhan has gone up. Maybe after eating all the food that was meant for you, Govardhan has become so strong that it is now floating in the sky and everyone has taken shelter of Govardhan, under Govardhan. So Indra said, oh, there was a mountain called Mainak that used to fly. But I cut its wings because it used to fly with its wings, a mountain with wings. So since then, that mountain has become static. Now has, its, has it developed its wings again and started to fly? Anyway, with my thunder I cut the wings and I smashed his, his pride. So, uh, so Indra sent thunder with the order, just keep on breaking this mountain. Just go and destroy the mountain. But although thunder was coming incessantly, striking, nothing happened to the hill. Uh, because Krishna was absorbing the shock of the thunder. Bajra. So in this way, when finally after seven days, Indra began to wonder, what is this? Who is this boy? So Indra went to his guru, Brihaspati, and asked him, who is this boy? And he told him what happened. Brihaspati said, Indra, you made a big mistake. This boy is the Mm. The origin of your Lord of the Lords, Narayan. Uh, Narayan is his Amsa. Ete Changsha Kalapumsha Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. So Narayan, then Indra started to tremble with fear. Uh, so he said, Please tell me what can I do? So then <coughs> Brihaspati said, look, Krishna is naturally very angry with you hmm? because you dared to destroy Vrindavan, his abode, 
where his most intimate devotees reside, you try to destroy his devotees. Krishna is not going to tolerate this offense. The only hope is you take shelter of Surabhi. Because in Krishna is very fond of his cows. So when Krishna sees Surabhi, Krishna will see Surabhi, his anger will subside. Then you come out and beg forgiveness. So Krishna did, Indra did that. Indra went to Surabhi and Surabhi said, okay, you come hiding behind me. So Indra was holding on to Surabhi's tail <laughs> and came to Krishna. When Surabhi bathed Indra, uh, bathed Krishna with, his, with her milk. So when Krishna's anger subsided, then Indra came, begged forgiveness. So from these pastimes, what do we learn? What did we learn? Hmm? Is there any need to worship Indra? Is there any need to worship any demigods? No. We are respectful towards demigods, but we don't need to. <coughs> we don't need to worship them to have our basic necessities fulfilled. Our goal of life is to surrender to Krishna. Worship Krishna. Aradho Bhagavan Braje Shotanai. The supreme worshipable Lord is the son of Nanda Maharaj, Sri Krishna. Staddhamo Vrindavanam. His abode is Vrindavan. Now Govardhan Puja has, or rather this Govardhan pastimes, lifting of Govardhan pastimes has various other uh, objectives also. Krishna by performing one pastimes fulfill many purposes. Residents of Vrindavan, what do they want? What the residents of Vrindavan want? They simply wanted to be with Krishna. But the cowherd boys, they used to be with Krishna during the day. Cowherd boys, cows, they are with Krishna during day. At night, they can't be with Krishna. The gopis are with Krishna at night. During the day, they can't be with Krishna. And Nanda Maharaj, Mother Jashoda and other elderly uh, residents of Vrindavan, they would see Krishna only when Krishna would come back uh, after pastoring ground, tending the cows in the pastoring ground and, uh, and when Krishna would stay and go to the pasture. So they would see only Krishna for during that time, sometime in the morning, sometime in the evening. But they all wanted to see Krishna all the time. Therefore, Krishna made that arrangement through this lifting of Govardhan. For seven days, seven nights, they all were with Krishna, uninterrupted. Hmm. So that is how Krishna fulfilled everyone's desire uh, through this lifting of Govardhan pastimes. Thank you all very much. All glory is to Śrīla Prabhupāda, Gaur, Premanande, Hari. Does anybody have any question? <coughs> Demigod. Kaise? नहीं नहीं डेमिगॉड्स करते नहीं हैं वो भगवान की जब भगवान के शरण लेते हैं कोई तो भगवान ही उसको आगे बढ़ाने के लिए ऐसे आयोजन करते हैं मुसीबतें में डालते हैं वो डेमिगॉड्स नहीं भगवान की इच्छा से ये होता है वो मुसीबत के कारण वो भगवान के प्रति और भी आशक्त होते हैं भगवान के प्रति आशक्ति बढ़ाने के लिए ये मुसीबतें आती हैं 
Okay. Material world is created by Sadasi. Where did you get that? Give me the source. Where did you get that? Did you get that in any of the scriptures? <laughs> so, anyway, the material world is not created by Sadasi. I gave the description, Vishnu created the material world. In spite of telling so much, still you are getting into this material world is created by Sadasi. Where did you get that? Jayesh Das from Calcutta. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances. My question is, when Akrura was bringing Krishna and Balaram to Mathura on the way, he went to take part in Jamuna and he saw Krishna simultaneously under the water and on the chariot. Which one is Brajendra Nandan and which one is Vasudev Krishna? Brajendra Nandan Krishna is whom Akrura, Akrura took up to that point. And when he saw him on the water, not under water, he saw him uh, in the water or on the water, his forearm form. That forearm form that he saw was Vasudev Krishna. And the Krishna, the two arm form Krishna, Vasudev Krishna, you see Brajendra Nandan Krishna is always two armed. Dibhuj, Shamsundar, Murlidhar. That's the definition of Brajendra Nandan Krishna. He is two armed. He is Sham Sundar and he plays flute, Murlidhar. But Vasudev Krishna is sometimes two armed, sometimes four armed. Anyway, as you are asking, that the one he saw on the water is Vasudev Krishna. Champu Kabya is a Champu is a structure. Uh, Champu generally scriptures are all in poetry, in symmetrical poetry. But Champu sometimes prose, sometimes poetry. That is called when it is sometimes prose, sometimes poetry, that is called Champu Kabya, like Gopal Champu, hmm? Brindavan Champu. They are generally Mahaprabhu's associates, the Goswamis. They uh, wrote Krishna's pastimes in form of Champus. Yes? No, Devi is the address of a female. The female are addressed as Devi and male are addressed as Deva. Yes, so, but the Devi, does that address that the mother Yashoda is Devi or the lady who carries the name? Oh, no, no, that is, Devi. no, that mother Yashoda is the Devi. Say Yashoda Devi Dasi. Yes. Huh? So Yashoda Devi is servant. No, that is the, you know, like the women are addressed as Devi. Like Jasoda uh, is Devi because she is a woman. But is she addressed as Devi because she is a special woman or is, can any woman be 
it would depend like uh, in the it actually any woman can be addressed as Devi yeah. like uh, Yeah. Generally, in the Vedic culture, sometimes they don't address by name directly. You know, because of respect. Uh, like uh, uh, superiors generally not addressed by name. Like a father, the son, when he would address his father's name, then he would use the word Sri, Srimat etc. Like Prabhupada, we don't say, generally we don't say Prabhupada, we say Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Srila Abhay Charana Aravindo uh, Prabhupada. So, uh, as a kind of a, a respectful way of addressing is, uh, but uh, It's not that only the husband can call the wife Devi. It will be, you know, it will it will depend on time, place, and circumstances. Jamuna Priya. Yeah. Thank you so much for the great questions. I had a few questions, short ones, but I first wanted to ask you one about the question that you said that the the goal is to enjoy the Krishna in the day, in the movies at night, and we live in the hills, so they all of them are there for seven days. So. When? When, when they were under the hill for seven days all together. They all didn't, didn't sleep. They all were looking at Krishna. <laughs> for seven days their eyes were glued onto Krishna. <laughs> so that's how Krishna fulfilled their desires. You have... How many other questions? Here? Okay. Can Krishna say, let there be light, and there was light? So does Krishna have to take, appoint an engineer, <laughs> then take a, <laughs> you know, make a, some drawings, and then get some s contractor come and build it? Or he can just, in a flash of a moment, he can make arrangements. Sometimes Krishna does take the help of Vishakarma. Sometimes Krishna does take help. But sometimes, like in this case, just Krishna's will created that. He lifted and it happened. <laughs> And in the ocean, in the causal ocean. Because, yeah, this universe is, has seven outer layers and outside the layer is uh, causal ocean. And that causal ocean is sometimes described as Viraja, uh, Viraja river. Mm. And uh, beyond Viraja is Brahma Jyoti and then the spiritual sky. It's, you know, like, you can consider, it's a ocean of cause. It's not water. 
you see it's an ocean of cause cause is a substance just as water is H2O cause is B cause <laughs> so that's cause and the universe is floating in that ocean of cause Serve him with all your heart, offering all your love to him, uh, offering all your dedication. That's what Govardhan wants. Mm. Mm. Huh? Beta Brahmachari ho gaya. Toh jo Brahmachari bana tum tum prasannu huye ho? Ya? Toh Vaishnava Aparad mat karna. वो जो मार्ग अपनाया है वो सबसे श्रेष्ठ मार्ग है उसके राह पर रुकावट मत डालना ठीक है देखो भगवान का भक्त होने जब जब कोई भगवान का भक्त बनता है उसका दस पीढ़ी पहले दस पीढ़ी पीछे उद्धार हो जाता है तो ऐसा सौभाग्य मिलना क्या सही है या नहीं ठीक है ऐसे सोचो कि जब लड़का अगर नौकरी करता था बहुत दूर तो तुम तुमसे ऐसे तो दूर चला जाता था तो वैसे जब कभी कभी लड़का दूर चला जाता है नौकरी के वास्ते अब ये सोचो ये भगवान की वास्ते वो मंदिर में आ गया है भगवान का नौकरी कर रहा है तो बताओ किसका नौकरी अच्छा है हाँ भगवान का नौकरी है या रिलायंस का नौकरी हाँ तो तो ये सोच ये समझना ये क्योंकि वो जो ममता जो है वो माया की प्रभाव से हो रहा है पिछले जन्म में बाल बच्चा था तुम्हारा पिछले जन्म में पता ही नहीं अगले जन्म में भी इस जन्म का जो बाल बच्चे हैं उसके बारे में कुछ भी पता नहीं रहेगा ठीक है It will depend. It will depend on their consciousness also. If they are not, you know, devotees, then yeah, going to Vrindavan won't be possible. Only devotees will be able to go to Vrindavan. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. I had a question that is it true that we cannot advance unless the relationship with the devotees are not or you can put it the other way around. As you advance, your relationship with devotees become better and better. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, another question from <clears throat> uh, Ram Rajya Das, Delhi. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. My question is, Indra is making many times mistakes like in Govardhan pastimes, 
and Prithu Maharaj pastimes and many other times. But Lord Krishna is still helping Indra, forgiving him to preserve his position. Maharaj, can you explain why Lord Krishna is taking side of Indra? <laughs> <coughs> because Indra is his appointed employee. When the Malik, when the boss has a good employee, even if sometimes the employee makes a mistake, you know, he tolerates it. And besides that, these are all Krishna's pastimes. Uh, pastimes is like a drama. Like in a drama, different actors, actresses play their roles. So in Krishna's pastimes, these uh, different uh, personalities are playing their roles. Like even look at Ravan and Kumbhakarna. Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, who are they? They are his associates, Jai and Vijay. So in this way, uh, apparently they are playing, like in a stage, in a play, uh, there is a hero and there is a villain. On the stage, the villain is so inimical to the hero. They, are, they have such conflict. But out, outside the stage, they are friends. So similarly in Krishna's pastimes, different r individuals are playing, some are, uh, uh, some are playing a favorable role, some are playing unfavorable role. But to play, say a drama is enacted by the king, will the king get any Tom, Dick and Harry to play different roles in the drama? Or the king will have his own people to play the roles? So in Krishna's pastimes, even the villains are Krishna's own people. <laughs> even the demons are Krishna's own people. Uh, so that's how we have to look at it. They're playing the role in that way. They're making mistakes. But Krishna is, when they surrender to Krishna, they're uh, forgiven. So this is how Krishna is teaching us that no matter whoever we are, whatever we may do, if we surrender to Krishna, everything will be forgiven. Okay, thank you all very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari So today is my last day. I'll be leaving at about 1 o'clock, 1.15 I think. I'll be leaving, quarter past 1. And <clears throat> so I had a very nice time with you all. This time because of my treatment I could not give so much time to you all. But uh, I can see that just by being here many things has been accomplished and uh, so become very good devotees. And as I answer to his, your name, yeah, uh, so uh, like the sign of advancement is your relationship with devotees will become good. So show your advancement in that way. And develop nice relationship with all the devotees. Create a very nice atmosphere here. Don't uh, get into conflict. Don't create any undesirable situation create a very nice atmosphere where everyone is happy. Mm. And in this way continue to serve Radha Madan Mohan, Krishna Balaram and Gaur Nitai and Srila Prabhupada. Mm. Thank you all very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari When did you come? Today morning. <laughs> I see. Today morning. You'll stay here for some day? Yeah, definitely. How many days? No, not day. Oh. By evening, I will. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. 
Hare Krishna. Gold Premanandi. Mang 
शुभकामनाएं आज रात को बहुत पटा के रात को आपने बहुत पटा के छोड़े
उज्जैन में ही रहो ना कितने बजे करना है आपको पौने दस बजे फिर मेरा हो जाएगा पौने दस आज आज नहीं पौने दस पौने दस हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे Thank you. 